Good morning, my friends. It's Wednesday, March 6th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. This is from the Walls of the Church in Assisi by Giotto, The Arrest of Christ. So you can see all this battling going on, soldiers and disciples fighting one another, but in the midst of it, Judas embracing Jesus and betraying him with a kiss. Sometimes it's in false kindness that we do the best damage. The worst kind of betrayal happens in false love, passive aggressivity, damaging falsehood. In the town of Corinth, there was a lot of meat in the marketplace that had been offered up to the gods. It was idol meat. Um, and there was a dispute at the church in Corinth about whether it was okay to eat that meat. Paul enters the dispute and says, you know, it doesn't matter. If those gods don't exist. Sure, you can eat the meat. But remember that when you eat it, you're also making an example for people that don't understand yet about Christ, for who are new to the faith. So don't just think about what's right for yourself. Think about what you're saying to your community. We do that a lot in the Episcopal Church. We use a lot of fancy words that nobody understands. We do this ancient liturgy, but we don't explain it. Um, I just did a funeral workshop and tried to explain to everybody, you've got to start by saying this Paschal candle is a kindred, kindled fire that, that is a symbol of eternal life, and we use it to lead the remains of the of the person into the worship service. We got to explain this stuff. Otherwise, people have no idea what we're talking about. Pistachio agrees with me in here in the background. Paul is saying it's not just about you. Sure, you can eat whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But what are you saying to people that don't yet understand everything? Are you explaining yourself? Start slowly. Bring people with you. Don't confuse them or damage their faith. Don't assume that they understand things they don't. Make your worship accessible. Explain. Bring people with you. Otherwise, you have this kind of arrogance and isolation about you. You're saying to them, I don't really care that you don't understand, or I don't really care if, if, if you are comprehending what I'm doing. I'm just going to go on and worship in the way that I know how, which is the best way, but I'm not going to explain to you why. Don't be arrogant. Make everything accessible. Share it. Share your worship. Share your practices. Share the why. Because the why is what's important, not the what. Whether we lift our hands or, per, or kneel down or whether we yell praises or humbly sit in silence. It's all the same to God, but we do these things for a reason. Let's get better explaining our why. The beauty lies in the ancient meanings that thread their way through the centuries in our tradition, but we're not doing a good enough job of explaining what they are and why we do them. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings of our life, for worship, for liturgy, for art. Help us to make these things accessible, to explain their meaning. Help us not to betray Christ by simply parading on without bringing others with us. Help us not to be so arrogant as to assume that people understand what we're doing anymore, but to explain in love and patience and bring those who do not know you a little closer to the knowledge and love of you. I will pause now and ask you to name aloud the people that you love who may be sick or in need of prayer.
bring peace to this world, O Lord. Help us to communicate with one another, to honor one another. Bring us peace. Help us to be thankful for this beautiful earth that you've given us, for our bodies, for the gift of life itself. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who is always trying to be known to us. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.